In fishing, few choices are either precisely right or blatantly wrong. Rather, angling is a game of percentages, where the odds of fishing particular types of areas Pretty good using one. certain styles of lures or baits either raises your odds for success or diminishes your chances for putting fish on the line. In essence, the better the choices you make, the more and bigger fish you're likely to catch. On any given day, are the most active fish likely to be deep, shallow, or in between? Using deep offshore structures or shallower shoreline related spots? Lying deep within particular forms of cover or relating to irregularities along its outer edges? The quicker you zero in on their location, the sooner the fun begins. Today, on the edge, we explore a variety of strategies for finding fish. First, we focus on finding active bass along the edges of aquatic weed cover. Then, we examine the shapes of typical walleye structures, focusing on high percentage spots like points, corners, and sharp drop-offs that tend to attract and hold numbers of large fish. It's all about playing percentages to quickly and efficiently eliminate unproductive water to put you on the most and biggest fish. After all, you can't catch them till you find them. Here's how and where to look. You know, we've been catching a sort of a, a whole series of different size of fish, but the thing is, at some point in time, it's amazing on how big a fish you catch doing this, even in really, really shallow water. That's what's really cool about it. I mean, when you, all of a sudden you could be hooking, you know, five to eight pounders in certain conditions, we catch really big fish to fish in this shallow water with the snap jigging uh, presentation. Why take chances with your engines? Protect them from neglect, wear and tear the easy way with Seafoam Motor Treatment. Seafoam helps to maintain top engine performance by removing harmful deposit buildup from your engine and fuel system. Control moisture and gas and diesel. Stabilize fuel for up to two years and lubricate your engines to start easier, run cooler and last longer. Trust all your engines to Seafoam Motor Treatment, the choice of mechanics for over 70 years. Are you finding it harder and harder to spend time with your family? All you need is the right place to reconnect. <laughs> Big 
walleye, Dad. Here we go. This is fun. <laughs> Northwest Ontario, your place to reconnect. Closed captioning provided by Seafoam Motor Treatment. You know, every time you go out in the water, one of the most critical aspects of angling is finding fish. And I'm out with Dave Sanda today. We haven't been on this water this particular year. And what we're gonna look at is the fish finding process. You know, just because of the nature of the business that we're in, we fish for uh, largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, muskies. And there's a really distinct process to go find fish, whether you're fishing spring, summer, or fall. In any particular body of water, you want to understand the habitat that's available to the fish. In this case, we've got a lot of, lot of different options. There's big weed flats, there's shallow emergent cover, there's flooded wood, there's some lily pads, there's shoreline grass, there's a lot of different options that the bass have to use. And they will make different use of these at different times of the year, depending on the cover, the water temperature, the clarity, the location of the food, the kind of food they're eating. So they have a lot of different options, and it's our job to go out and check these different options today. Uh, but in all cases, you will tend to find the most active bass along the edges of whatever particular type of cover that they're using. And so our, our job today is to go out and start checking some edges on different types of cover and see where the bass might be. One common thread runs through the fish finding process, no matter which species you're after. It's the process of elimination. Most of the time, your job is to eliminate unproductive water as quickly as possible, discovering areas that attract oh, fish one. along oh, the way, oh. and then repeating oh, productive one. patterns in similar areas throughout the lake. To begin, we usually divide lakes into sections, some of which are similar and some not. For example, the accompanying lake has shallow spawning bays, transition areas where fish stage before and after spawning, and deeper main lake areas where bass may live in summer, fall, and winter. Today, James and I are fishing a lake that we know well. It's midsummer, and the water temperature is about as warm as it will get all year. Logically, the bass should all be done spawning and have moved to prime summer feeding areas. We began our search on large main lake structures that typically attract a lot of fish in summer. We focused our initial attention on deep weed edges, particularly where points and turns along the weed line and where deep rock extensions jutting into the basin created likely areas for bass to gather and feed. But guess what? After a few hours, we had little to show for our efforts, necessitating a shift to Plan B. Our next step was to move to a radically different section of the lake and try a completely different approach. In this case, it was going up into the junk and fishing shallower, heavy cover. Huh. That's interesting. That told us something. <laughs> you know, over the course of the day, we've been experimenting on so many different edges. And I finally, we'd fished the shoreline, we'd been fishing some deeper water. And then it started, I put a, a, a rat on. And the first one I catch is a pretty sporty one. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Look at the size of him. Real fatty, beautiful bass. Boy, he just lunched it too. There he is. Oh, <laughs> that's what I mean. You got to just bull him out of there when you get up. That fish just came out of that, right through the mass of that stuff. And you got to pull him sort of one way. But the thing is, it's sort of a no fooling type situation. That's sort of fun though. <laughs> that, that was, I really, really like the way he pounded the bait. Come here, buddy. Nah, that's a good one. Oh boy, there we go. Gorgeous bass. Let me get her back. Sort of brought her home with her home. You know, for this really heavy uh, uh, junk fishing like this, where you actually have matted vegetation that comes right to the surface and it's really thick, your rod and reel is really critical. You'd never land them. This is a uh, eight foot six angling edge rod. I have 50 pound test. 832 braid. This happens to be camo. This is really sort of cool line. The other thing, I got a real fast action reel. This is an XO. I got it really, the drag really set relatively tight. So when you hit the fish, you do not fight the fish. 
the fish is literally winched back to the boat. It's the only way you can land bass out of this type of cover. You hook a four or five pounder back there, you just winch them and pull them right to the boat. I'm fishing the lighter periphery out here outside the weeds. And so I've got a little bit different setup. With the X-Pop, I'm using a uh, six foot 10 uh, angling edge rod. It's a medium heavy and it has a, an, an XO 200 reel on there, which is a 7.3 to one retrieve. And most importantly, I'm fishing with 17 pound test Suffolk Siege Mono here. It's a tough mono and it's a wide line and so it keeps the lure up on the surface more. It doesn't want to drag the lure underneath. So this is balanced perfectly for fish in this type of presentation. So I'm, I'm out in the fringe. James is back in the tough stuff and we've got everything covered. presentation it may be just top water that guy there look at that Dave he's a palomino oh come here buddy a little bit better one what did you do you just threw it out in back of the I boat I was just dragging behind the boat in that area oh where you had one up <laughs> at this time of the year forage is abundant weed growth has grown to its peak height and density and bass have a lot of options for successful feeding. Groups of bass could be located at nearly any depth in the water column, from the slop to the drop and everywhere in between. As efficient predators, bass take advantage of opportunities for successful feeding, which give them advantages over their prey. Many of these occur along edges in the underwater habitat. Some edges make great ambush points from which bass dash out and grab passing meals. Other edges form walls against which bass corner and trap their prey. In fact, you'll find edges just about everywhere if you know where to look. The shoreline of the lake forms an edge around the lake, often filled with different forms of emergent cover. Lily pad beds have visible outer edges, while shallow weeds like coontail often form inside edges where they cease growing. The deep outer perimeters of tall weeds like cabbage form distinct edges you can see with your electronics. Less obvious are transitions between weed types, which form edges where the depth changes substantially, or changes in bottom composition favor one species of weed versus another. They're best detected by peering into the water with polarized sunglasses. The tops of weed beds form an edge. So does the surface of the water. Edges occur both horizontally and vertically, requiring you to think in 3D when searching for fish. Ooh, there you go. Another one. See, out in Same front, size. that's a little bit better one there, huh? A little bit bigger, maybe. Oop, look at that, another one. I mean, it's just loaded in here. Yeah, it seems the combination of the noise without excessive speed is the key. Took us a while to figure out that combination, but it sure is working. That's a nice one. We use a variety of lures to fish different edges, matching the lure characteristics to depth, cover, and fish activity. For example, crankbaits are great for fishing the edges of weeds and wood, both across their tops and alongside the cover. If we need to penetrate a bit deeper into the edges of heavier cover, spinnerbaits may be a better choice due to their snag-resistant design. Texas rig worms, jigs, and heavy punch baits work better for fishing down into holes or probing down deeper into the bottom edges of cover when bass are less active. Topwater baits excel for fishing across the surface, which is the largest edge in the lake, especially when bass are active enough to rise up and reach for the sky. At the opposite end of the spectrum, roller jigs or drop shot rigs are ideal for vertically fishing the deep fringe of rocks meeting the basin. Deep, shallow, or in-between edges abound. Find and fish them with the right tackle and technique, and you're in business for catching bass. Oh, size? I can't tell. I don't think he's real big. 
Well, pick. Oh, down in the grass. Oh, oh yeah, he's a decent one. Maybe we'll get. Oh, it's a little bit better one there. He's coming. Is he? He was exploring the trolling motor back there. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Come here, baby. Oh, there he is. Whoa. Nice bass on a topwater lure. An interesting day today. We had to assemble the pattern by checking the different types of habitat, working the different types of edges, and using the right type of lures for every situation. And little by little, we put the pattern together and wound up catching a bunch of nice bass today. It's a similar type of a situation that you can do on the waters you fish. All it takes is a little observation, experimentation, and you'll put bass in the boat like these. When it comes to tickling pockets, points, fronts and fringes, bass weed line mechanics details the nuts and bolts of extracting bass from the green stuff. It's part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection available at anglingedge.com. For years, they've quietly taken you where the fish are, but now the silence is about to break. With the incredible new iPilot Link, your Minn Kota and Hummingbird can communicate with each other, so you can hold on a spot like an electronic anchor, record and return to waypoints and paths, follow any Lake Master depth contour, and more, all automatically and all from your Hummingbird or the Link remote. They talk, and you'll be speechless. In fishing, nothing beats the confidence and enjoyment that comes with using the best equipment. There's a reason why generations of professional anglers, guides, and camp operators make Lund their boat of choice. They stand up to the elements and the repeated use that hardcore anglers put them through, season after season. They're guide-tested, wilderness-proven. Isn't it time for you to experience the Lund difference? Welcome to the Inner Circle. Rotating coverage up to 300 feet gives you a detailed 360 degree view of structure, contour changes, and fish. So you can see them before they see you. Introducing 360 Imaging, only from Hummingbird. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Man, look at how many fish are under that dock. Hey, how are we going to get them today? Well, it's midsummer. The fish should be scattered throughout the water column. Some are deep, some are at mid range, and some are up in the shallows. Classic fish everywhere. But which ones are biting? Let's start up shallow. We can fish a whole lot faster to start pulsing a bite. My first pick is windblown front faces of mid lake humps. Oh, that'll do first Big cast. One? I love summer, man. I got one too. Oh, I just dumped one. Did you one. miss yours? Yes, I just had one too. I'm just going to mark it. Okay, I got yeah, to mark it. This is a good fish, man. Oh, you put a coordinate down already. I got it. I just hit it. I'll get myself a net. Oh, yes, that's what I like. It's a big fish. Is that? Yeah. Holy mackerel. Nice fish. Nice Let's fish. Let's see. Nice fish. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Wow. Nice one. There you go. Ooh, nice healthy that. one, man. Beautiful fish. Whoa. Wow, okay. Hey, got it. Got wow, it. Yeah, hold nice that fish. thing up. Hang on a second. Let me get a, let me get a grip on that dog. Oh, look at this. Uh, there we go. Sit down here a second. I GPSed it, so we're on right on a windswept side at this point. It's a better one, Al. We may need a net on this dog here. Looks good. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, yeah. There nice fish. Go. Holy there mackerel. Go. Beautiful. Good fish, Jimbo. Here, Skinny buddy. water walleyes. Nothing better. And these fish are real scrappers in shallow water. The fact is, if you've got a lake that has a good population of walleyes and substantial weed growth, chances are there are some walleyes in them all year long. It's pretty simple math. There is always some type of forage in the weeds. Walleyes being top of the line predators simply follow the food. The trick for you as an angler is how do you, pardon the pun, weed them out? Well, you roll up your sleeves and force the fish to react to your presentation by aggressively pop jigging plastics. The biggest mistake that I see people consistently make that have been jig fishing all their life with live bait, minnows, uh, uh, pieces of night crawler, leeches on the back of it, is the fish, the, the hook, a piece of plastic on the back of it and fish it exactly the same way they did when they're using live bait. And it isn't gonna work. You've gotta really put a heavier bait on and really get the snap in that thing. This is a triggering bite, that's the key. You don't have the attraction of live bait, it's a triggering bite, it's a reaction bite. And when it's right, it can be incredibly right. You know, I don't think anything uh, has really changed the face of modern angling than a uh, high-end mapping program like what this uh, Lake Master chip I have in this uh, 1198 Hummingbird unit. As of recently, over the last couple of hours, Al and I have been finding uh, the walleyes actually on pretty specific location. We have the wind is blowing from this direction. We find the fastest drop-offs on the tips of these points are sunken islands. And you can look backward here and you can see another GPS coordinate here. That's the exact same situation. And this is what the real key of this is. It enables you, once you start catching fish in a given location, you can open up the map and quickly identify the next spot down the lake that is a carbon copy to where you're catching fish right now. And that's something that, you know, it wasn't that long ago before these uh, high-end uh, mapping programs. You had to, it was a lot more work to go find them. And I tell you one thing, it's not only for walleye, but for any different species of fish. Whoa. Guess what we got? Come here, buddy. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, that's a better that's one a there. Good, that's okay. a Swing fat little it. guy. Yeah, Holy that, mackerel. That's a better fish. Yeah. yeah. Oh. There man. you go. Look at that. Look at that, huh? Nice fish. Nice walleye. That felt good. I knew I, knew I had a better one when I set on, on that baby. Ugh. You know, when you, a lot of people think walleyes, you, you know, that they're fussy, they're uh, uh, real, real meticulous you got to fish that live bait real slow to get them look at that mouth look at that see all those teeth in there that's telling you that that's the top of the line predator in any system just the same way a muskie is a top of the line predator a smallmouth bass is a top of the line predator and when you're fishing for a fish like that they can be very triggerable and that's the key things like depth and speed and in and, and, and directional changes. And on walleyes, they love these things that are kind of darting, jumping, do, dodging on that jig. And that's what triggers a fish like this to bite. And what a fun way to catch them. Hey, if you haven't loaded up on the availability of how many good soft baits there are today to put on the back of your jig for walleyes like this, you're missing a boat. It's a fun way to fish and extremely productive. And in many bodies of water, it's the best way there is to catch walleyes like this consistently, particularly in shallow water. Live bait isn't your only option for catching walleyes. Jigs, soft baits, and hard body baits are deadly for triggering big fish to strike. Break tradition with walleye artificial intelligence, part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection, available at anglingedge.com. Suffolk Safe 32 is constructed with seven strands of Dyneema and a single strand of Gore Performance Fiber. It's the roundest, longest casting line in the world. It offers superior abrasion resistance so you can fish it anywhere. It's the strongest, most sensitive, and durable small diameter braid ever to hit the water. Nice fish, Brett. Thanks. Suffolk 832, always use the best line. Really? You're seriously just gonna leave me in here? Yeah, fishing deep today, Ike. Are you kidding me?
These are perfect additions for pulling big bass out of heavy cover. Yeah? Heck yeah! Try one of these weedless wacky jigs. All right, yeah. It, it has an offset hook and stainless steel weed guard. Whoa! <laughs> oh. Sorry, Ike. Flip it in there, and it's wacky action will have you pulling out one fat bass after another. Please! I can't say anything. And there she is. My first Mercury. 154 stroke, the lightweight heavyweight. And she comes with all this. Say hi to Wendy from customer support. She's always there to help. Jerry from product testing, he dishes out the torture. They can take it. Good. And Tim from design, he never misses a detail. Obsessed with quality. Bobby, prop engineer, he turns horsepower into performance. This is George. From it's good to have Mercury behind you. Meet the rest of the team at mercurymarine.com. You're going to need to pick a boat. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Okay, here's the deal. You're watching a football game on Sunday afternoon. The guy gets thrown a pass, he gets into the end zone, he catches the ball for the touchdown. He wins the game with that catch. Bends his knee, puts his hand up in the air, and if you could read his lips, he says, thank you, Lord, or praise God, something like that. You're watching a television fishing show. It might be a tournament show. It might be Bassmaster. It might be FLW Outdoors or just a couple guys enjoying their time on the water. Guy catches a really big bass, gets all excited, pulls it into the boat and says, praise God, thank you, Lord, something like that. What do you think about when you hear or see something like that? Well, one of the thoughts that has to cross your mind is what happened to the 10 times the guy was thrown the ball and he never caught it. What about the, the, the two or three days or, or, or two or three tournaments this guy fished and he never caught a big bass, maybe never cashed a check? And that's a natural thought. It's a thought that many of you, I'm sure, have had to have. And they're, well, I'm glad you kind of asked that question because I got the answer for you. When you see that or hear that, people of faith, deep faith that believe in the Bible and God's word, this just comes natural to them. That's right, it comes natural to them. Their walk with God is not once a week, once a month, once a year. It's 24-7. And every time something good happens in their life, they're programmed to acknowledge God with a thank you. And the Bible talks a lot about thanksgiving, being thankful for the good things that happen to you. This is a natural thing for them. So I hope I answered that question for you. And from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. Thank you, Lord. Hey, I want to take a moment to thank you for watching. And if you really like what you see, we got a whole lot more. So check us out at any one of these online outlets.